Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati, and today I am here to fulfill your many, many requests to finally talk about Color Street. This nail art MLM has been on and off of my radar for some time, but I honestly thought that they were a new company and there wouldn't be much to talk about. Much to my surprise, however, Color Street has actually been around since the 80s, and there's far more to these nail strips than I originally suspected. So let's just jump right in and talk about how Color Street became an MLM and what they've been up to. Let's get into it. According to their website, Color Street was born in New York City. They say it began in 1988 when Fa Park was on a bus stuck in a traffic jam and saw a woman in a nearby cab trying to polish her nails. He thought there has to be a better way. He bought some nail polish and started experimenting with it, starting by painting it on different types of paper. After countless attempts, he finally created a process where although the top was dry, the bottom was still moist and could be adhered to the nail. Mr. Park's revolutionary vision, a 100% nail polish strip was born. Which side note from the intro, who the fuck uses the word moist in their stuff? Like I just, anyway. Fast forward decades with much hard work to perfect and patent his product, Mr. Park's innovation has become a leader in the beauty industry. All products are proudly made in the USA, which matters to him as he has made his American dream a reality. While millions of his nail polish strips are loved and used all over the world, he knew for his dream to come true, he had to open a party plan division. After a brief but highly successful time in direct sales himself, Mr. Park believed his vision would be an instant success in an environment where his creation can be demonstrated, explained, and admired. With this kind of business, I'm not going to give Park a hard time for not having the qualifications. When it comes to companies about dieting and supplements, I think it's important for the founder to have some kind of medical background so you can be sure they know what they're actually talking about, or at the very least, they should hire medical consultants. However, Fa Park was actually a music student who moved to New York from South Korea in 1980 to pursue opera, as stated in the Color Streets video, A Colorful Story. He was an immigrant with an idea and a passion to turn it into a reality. Quotes to build his adhesive nail machine were half a million dollars, but Park was determined and built his own machine instead. He studied engineering, he looked into the technology companies like Revlon used and made it his own. He received offers from companies to buy his own technology, but he refused each one. Though Park was poor, he was determined and in 2005 paid it off when Park made $13 million making packages for, of all companies, Avon. And I'm gonna be brutally honest here. I can't really bring myself to dislike Park much. Maybe the sappy music in the video got me like, I thrilled every second of this color street journey. Thank you all of you. I love you. I don't know, but the thing is, I've seen a lot of MLM founders talk throughout all of these videos and all of my research, and almost every single one of them has come across as prideful, arrogant, and pushy in some way. Park was none of those things. For the better part of two decades, he struggled, determined to make his idea work, believing in it, struggling, and trying to provide for his family all at the same time. This is pure speculation. And hey, maybe I'll feel differently the further we get into this, but I think that Park fell for the MLM scam because it was Avon that ordered from him. We've talked about Avon before and they're a very well-known MLM. So because they were what got Park started, he may not have realized what they were all about. And no, I'm not saying this is an excuse. He probably should have done more research before turning his company into an MLM. My sources and even a Hunbot personal sales website state he didn't get involved with direct sales until 2017. This means Park had 12 years after that massive order with Avon to learn about the problems with direct selling and MLMs. I would argue he's definitely not very business savvy if he went into an MLM model to follow, but he doesn't seem malicious, even though the model itself is kind of predatory and malicious. So I I don't know, I'm very torn about this. Also, just for a little bit more background, Park 
also founded in Coco in 2007 nail appliques that are sold at Ulta Beauty. Coconut nail art are also nail appliques, but those are sold at Walmart. And Color Street officially became Color Street in 2017, which is sort of under his In Coco umbrella, and it launched via the direct sales channel, as we stated. That's why myself, and I'm sure many of you, think of this as a brand new company, because Color Street, the MLM, is only a few years old, even though the products under InCoco have been around for almost 14 years. And sorry if that's a little bit confusing, we might mention InCoco and coconut nail art a bit today, but we're mainly going to focus on Color Street. But hey, if you have purchased from InCoco or coconut nail art before, now you know that all that money is ultimately working its way up to the same founder, the same parent company that supports an MLM. So take that information how you want. And now it's time for a small segue to talk about today's sponsor, Daily Harvest. Daily Harvest delivers delicious food built on all organic fruits and vegetables right to your door. It takes literally minutes to prepare and I never have to think twice if the food I'm eating is good for me because it is good for me, but it's also very tasty, which is a nice bonus. And Daily Harvest is going to be ready when you are. Everything stays fresh in your freezer until you're ready to enjoy it. So you waste less food too. No need to overthink any of your meals of the week with Daily Harvest, smoothies for breakfast, crisp flatbreads for lunch or dinner, and food that's perfect for cooler weather, like their perfectly roasted harvest bowls and soups. And Daily Harvest never uses preservatives, added sugar, or artificial anything. And they just launched their first ever plant-based milk collection, starting with almond milk. Daily Harvest milk is made of only almonds and a dash of sea salt, that's it. And Daily Harvest is also committed to minimizing their environmental impact. They're in the process of transitioning to 100% compostable, recyclable, plant-based, and renewable fiber packaging, which that's a huge bonus in my book. If you wanna get started today, make sure to go to dailyharvest.com and enter promo code MLM to get $25 off your first box. Again, that's promo code MLM for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com. So like with a lot of MLMs, you can't shop around on their site without being assigned a stylist, AKA a direct seller that you're shopping from. I went on Color Street's site, was assigned a random stylist, and then got to looking at their products. Their products are pretty self-explanatory. They've got nail press-ons that range from solid colors to glitters to designs. Under videos, they've got some pretty easy to follow application steps and even said those that criticize this MLM can admit the product itself isn't poor quality. But what about In Coco and Coconut Nail Art? Well, strangely enough, I couldn't find In Coco on Ulta Beauty's website anymore. That doesn't mean they're not sold there, but the only two nail sticker brands I saw were Dashing Diva and Scratch. However, at Walmart, each packet of coconut nail art is $5, yet on Color Street, just a solid color is $11. I'm sure we know why that's the case. You gotta price things up so that the Hunbots can get their commission, right? Even those who like Color Street notice this price difference and there's really no excuse for it. One blogger claims it's because Color Street has more designs. And I get the designs might be pricier, but why would all their solid nail colors be double the cost too? Why does that make the product less affordable because the website is better? Plus the same blogger who again raved about how well Color Street worked said that coconut nails didn't and they ripped off unevenly. So what is InCoco, the parent company supposedly doing making, you know, theoretically cheaper, crappier products to sell in stores? I don't know. And I don't really wanna speculate on it too much, but it's kind of shady that they offer like a kind of dupe for Color Street in stores instead of just taking the Color Street itself to the stores. You know, like a far more legitimate business that doesn't rely on direct sellers to be customers. I don't know, just crazy theories here. The thing is, as I continued my research, another MLM popped up a few times because of its similarities, Jamberry. And that like drew all sorts of memories from me because I remember I used to be like a receptionist at a spa like many, many years ago. And I remember there was this other front desk receptionist that worked with me that was like super crazy. And she was obsessed with these things called Jamberry and always tried to push them on me. But like, you girls always had acrylic nails. So like, you know, it's kind of like, what what are you trying to do here? Like, don't you see I've got little tips of evil on my fingers? Like, don't. Ultimately, finding out that that's an MLM is unsurprising and just kind of makes me laugh in retrospect. Like, wow, of course I was gonna be pitched an MLM and even there not fully understanding the deal, I was like, no. But anyway, Jamberry. 
Uh, it's another MLM that did nail wraps. So for anyone that might be buying Color Street because it's just unique, it's really not. This exact MLM has been done before and unfortunately it's failed before too. According to The Cut, in addition to special requests, Jamberry Nails offers hundreds of nail wrap patterns that range from polka dots to university logos to cow print. Founded in 2010 by Christy, Lindsay, and their older sister, Carrie Evans, the Linden, Utah-based company started in Christy's basement and now consists of almost 50 full-time employees. The idea for Jamberry originated in 2010 when Lindsay went to a salon and got purple and white zebra nail wraps on her toes. While watching the pedicurist bond the acrylic sheets to her nails with nothing but a few swipes of a hairdryer, she had a revelation. She came home and was like, guys, we could seriously make this, recalls Christy. And is it a horrible idea for a business? I honestly don't care. Nail wraps aren't exactly my thing, but it's probably just, you know, because I usually get acrylics and I've seen so many tacky designs. Like, I'm sorry, when I heard that Jamber used to do cow print nails, I was like, no ma'am. And that's before even finding out they were MLM, I was totally turned off by it. So if these sisters wanted to make this product, fine, but why the hell couldn't they do some basic research and go like, hmm, maybe an MLM isn't the best business model to follow. But as I said, they didn't last. In 2018, an article from CBS explains, Jam Berry, a multi-level marketer of nail wraps and other beauty products, faces accusations of stiffing thousands of non-employee salespeople after the company informed employees in late night email Wednesday that it was their last official day of work. Please come to the office at noon on Thursday for a discussion on what this means regarding health insurance, 401k, and other benefits. Mark Brown, Jamberry's Vice President of Human Resources, wrote in an email provided to CBS Money Watch. The fate of Jamberry's more than 50,000 non-employees sales consultants isn't clear. A memo sent to consultants Thursday afternoon confirmed that the Utah-based company is in foreclosure and that any product, gift cards, swag, marketing, or event purchases made prior to 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time on June 28, 2018 are ineligible for a refund from Jamberry. The company scrapped plans for an international conference planned for the Gaylord restaurant in Nashville, Tennessee for later this year. It also scrapped incentive trips to Costa Rica and Thailand for top performers. Like other multi-level marketers such as LuLaRoe, Jamberry's success is due to its savvy use of social media such as Facebook and Instagram, along with encouraging sales reps to hold parties in their homes. From the very beginning, the company's great challenge has been every company's dream, overwhelming demand. According to trade publication, Direct Selling News, To keep up with demand, it said, the company explored new manufacturing options, leading to initial bottlenecks and quality issues. The company has worked out those kinks. The writing has clearly been on the wall for Jamberry for a while. They have been offering special deals nonstop this year, said the Anti-MLM Coalition, an industry critic, citing cut price offers for consultant startup packages, flash sales one after another, and cheap signup for their style VIP package. I'm not saying this is destined to happen to Color Street. Don't worry, I know this is a Color Street video and I promise I haven't forgotten. But the reason why I mentioned this at all is because the similarities are striking. They're both nail wrap MLMs and it seems that any quality issues they have may be pushed onto their cheaper brand sold at Walmart, despite Coco Nail Art, In Coco, and Color Street all being one and the same. Again, this is pure speculation. I've got no idea where Color Street manufactures anything and any changes they might be making. But hey, I've got to wonder why I seriously can't find them on Ulta's site suddenly. Being curious, naturally, I decided to call an Ulta beauty store and ask if they had in Coco nail wraps in stock, and apparently they did carry them. So I guess it might be an in-store only thing then. Suspicious or not, I find it a little funny that they've got three different names for one product. Moving on though, I will say that my biggest problem with Color Street is their income disclosures, as is everyone's biggest issue with them, honestly. I want to assume the best of Park here, but it's really hard when this income disclosure reveals that, like every other MLM I cover, that Color Street pays their employees next to nothing. 54% of employees, yes, 54% of their stylists have a monthly average of $11 earned. The top in that category gets almost 20. And that's a fucking joke. I. I, well, I should say, I wish I was joking. That's not a joke. Those are actually the numbers, but it, it feels like a joke. It's so terrible. 
And I'm sure that that doesn't account for what they spend just to get an inventory either. So I'm sure it's even less than that. Now that of course, speculation, opinion, just to let you know. The percentage above them makes an average of $159 a month. So under $2,000 a year. Again, this doesn't account for any of the potential spending that they're using to be a part of the company. So I'm guessing it's significantly less than that too. Now this one up tier accounts for 33% of the company. So if we add that to the bottom 54 percentage, well, surprise, surprise, you've got 87% of the company right there in those two levels. The two other tiers above them are still pretty far below poverty levels, even with those added on, and you're just at over 97% of the company at that point. In summary, that's the majority of stylists making less than $200 annually, 87% making less than 2000 and 97% making below the poverty line annually. Color Street is also known for pushing bonuses as well. And by that, I mean, they insist that new sellers meet certain quotas to get a promotion and move up to the next level. Thankfully, one cup of coffee broke all these levels down pretty well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quote their article. And typical of MLMs to qualify for each level, there's a very complicated system of qualifying achievements you must maintain. In my opinion, these qualifications are meant to work against you, not for you. And it's why consultants may achieve a high status temporarily, but then lose it quickly after. Rather than go through all the boring details, here's the gist. All tiers require that you are bonus qualified, meaning that you sell $300 worth of stuff in one or more month during the calendar year. As you go higher in the levels, you need more qualified legs on your team. That means a level two, you need a couple level ones on your team. As a level four, you need a couple level threes, twos, and ones. There are also rules about group volume and capped group volume, which means that you need a certain number in sales and there's a cap on how much one of your legs can contribute to that GV. So if you are a team leader and have three qualified legs, you need everyone together to sell at least $5,000 worth of stuff in a month, but one team cannot account for more than 2,500 of that $5,000 total. Even the Color Street Income Disclosure says this, ranks can change throughout the year. I think what bothers me about MLMs that some people may not realize is that you can not only work your way up the pyramid, but right back down it as well. Being demoted in a company isn't completely uncommon. Nearly one in 10 workers have faced this at some point in their career. But in an MLM, it's more of a constant lingering threat as opposed to a potential punishment. Like I can understand why a salesman might be demoted if they were constantly reporting low numbers or why someone might be demoted for misbehavior at work. That makes sense. But Color Street has some pretty intense sales goals and more than that, recruitment goals. Because MLMs are structured in a way that makes you make money off of having a downline. These huns have to constantly maintain and harass their downline in order just to keep their own job. No one wins this way, except the people at the very top. The article I mentioned earlier also talks about being garage qualified. In other words, these people are forced to buy their own supply to support their business. It starts off with a $129 or a $299 starter kit, depending on which you choose. This includes 13 sets of nail strips, 72 testers, 40 remover pads, 100 prep pads, two large nail files, two nail buffers, 60 mini files, 50 cuticle sticks, a tote bag, 25 catalogs, and 25 opportunity brochures. The thing is, most of this seems to just be used by the consultant rather than sold. So it's almost, but not quite paying to get a job. If you get a job as a salesman anywhere else, I can understand why you'd test the product so you can better sell it to consumers. But having to purchase a whole inventory yourself, only in an MLM. Even though the 25% commission sounds tempting, when you put that into actual sales, Hunbots only earn $3.75 for every $15 sales set. So in order to make $7.50 an hour, a very low minimum wage job, as of right now, unless they upgrade it to $15 an hour, they have to sell two sets every hour. That might not sound like a lot, but believe me, it is. These nail sets are supposed to last 10 days, right? That's what their site says anyway. So let's do a bit of math here. Let's say someone has a bunch of friends that buy a new nail set every 10 days, friends that exclusively use Color Street. Now, Math, again, not my strong suit here, so feel free to correct me if I have been mistaken on my mathematical equations. But if someone wants to make $7.50 an hour, they have to sell two every hour. A full-time job is 40 hours a week. So that's 80 sales a week or roughly 320 sales a month. 
but divide that by three because they last 10 days and a month has about 30 days on average and you have 106 people. Do you have 106 friends that will consistently replenish their supply of Color Street every time it runs out? No? Gee, then wonder why no one's making a living wage on this and MLMs rely on recruitment instead. Hmm, their compensation plan takes pages upon pages to explain doesn't really bode well either. Seriously, if a job takes 24 pages to explain how you get paid, then I've got to wonder why. There's so many clarifications about how only a certain percentage of GV can come from one leg. No doubt pressuring a hun to get multiple legs to their pyramid. There's team value bonuses for incentive, more details on how you have to sell every month. Like, yeah, it's why I'd rather have a job that simply pays me for the work I do. And if it makes sense and maybe a commission on that. Sounds a hell of a lot simpler to me than all this qualified leg bullshit and group bonus language. But hey, that's uh, that's this MLM for you. Now that we've talked about how they are, the issues and potential problems Color Street may face, let's get into what people actually think about Color Street. Though their products aren't as poor quality as we've seen from other MLMs, or at least like, you know, they're not killing people like Herbalife has allegedly done, they still have a fair amount of critics. One review gave them just one star for overpriced products, hidden monthly expenses, being a pyramid scheme in disguise with a question mark after that. And they said only one Hunbot in 294 made over $28,000 in 2018, and they gave negative reviews online. Honestly, even though Color Street is probably comparable to Sensi in terms of simply being a mediocre MLM with halfway decent products, that doesn't mean their reviews are entirely positive either. There's not that many reviews out there to begin with, but with an average of 20 reviews on BBB, it's giving them a 2.9 star rating, not even three stars. So that's a bit of a yikes on trikes. Here's what some reviews from the BBB said. One from KCR read, my sister had a nail party and my mom ordered many sets of nails, some for her, some for me. My mom used one of her sets right away and had a difficult time getting them to stick, but thought she did something wrong. She held onto my nail sets until I was able to make it down South to visit them and we could do them together. Because of COVID, I was unable to get down there earlier. She didn't send them to me because I have severe arthritis in both hands and need help applying them. I finally went down for Thanksgiving and we were able to try them on my nails for the first time. Our experience was terrible. The nails kept ripping and they didn't want to stick at all. I tried to contact the company, but because it had been over 90 days, they won't do anything even though they were stored properly and never opened. I will never use these nails again and will make sure to let everyone know what a bad experience I had with them. Extremely disappointed with this product and this company. Another from Catherine F stated, they're a bully company who pushes their reps to order, 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 but cannot keep up with demand while also encouraging consultants to bash other nail strip companies wherever they see them online and in person. Horrible business ethics. Lastly, Marie M also said, so first of all, this is a shit company and is a sister company of InCoco after doing some research. You have to go through a stylist to purchase product. I personally wore them for a month and stopped after experiencing chipping, peeling, nail bed separation, and visible chemical burns. My close friends and family also told me they had completely damaged nails. I researched the chemical list and tossed any strips I had left. Why isn't anyone talking about the nail chemical burns and damage? I have never had any polish do this to my nails. And there's quite a bit to unpack here. I know we can go through and say, hey, these are only three people's experiences, but honestly, most of the recent reviews I saw were all negative. And these are things that the company absolutely should be responding to. I didn't even know nail wraps could end up giving like nail bed separation and chem burns. And that sounds terrifying if true. Then, you know, obviously if that is like, of course it would be an MLM to do this shit. They just want people to sell more products, sell more products, sell more products as the review states, but don't have the ability to keep up with their own demands. And if they're really going around bashing other nail companies, other competitors, then it's just another exhausting example of how petty MLMs are. As of right now, there aren't any lawsuits against Color Street. They seem to have kept their nose clean for the most part, but they also haven't been around for that long. I'm curious to see if failure will find them just as it found Jamberry, or if maybe they'll end up in legal trouble or you know, just how long they're really gonna remain on the table. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's video. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at Color Street with a hint of Jamberry. And if you did enjoy this episode, make sure to leave a like. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe so you never miss a new upload. 
And if you want any more content from me, you can pop open my description box. You're going to find my Linktree link, which has all of my social media, second channels and other projects and things that I'm associated with. So you can connect with me outside of YouTube. So thank you guys so much for making it to another video. Love you and have a great rest of your Monday. Bye.